I think that there was a really kind of a renewed interest in that sort of dynamic of like mistrust in the highest office and not understanding, um, you know, who to trust. Welcome to Watch Mojo's Pop in the Culture, your weekly entertainment check in. And me, I am your host with the most mojo, of course. That's right, it's me, Mr. Hollywood himself. Matt Demers. Another great show coming your way. I'll be speaking with uh, Willa Fitzgerald and John Magaro. They star in the new political thriller slash comedy, 18 and a half. Plus, I've got Danielle Laraquente. She's in Bosch Legacy and so much more. Don't want to miss any of these chats, but first we're jumping in to our Hollywood headlines. And here to break it all down with me is Ricky Tucci. Hey, Ricky, how's it going? It's going great, Matt. Thanks for having me. Uh, well, help. Uh, thanks for helping me break all this down because there is a lot to get to. We're starting with the trial that has captivated the world, uh, myself included. I can't mm. stop watching. Yeah. Now, I'm talking, of course, about Johnny Depp, Amber Heard. Be honest, have you been tuning in to see the clips oh, yeah. and the highlights? Yeah, yeah, I've been following the trial since... Uh... Day one, I think I've been trying to, to catch up all the craziness that's been happening back and forth. Uh, yeah, it's like you can't you can't look away, man. No matter how crazy it gets, it's just like there's there's something that's going to one up it. So it's been it's been a ride. Yeah. Six weeks, six weeks. Uh, so now uh, we've had testimony uh, done and yep. now the, it's up to the jury to decide. So I'm not going <laughs> to I'm not going to ask <laughs> you which side you're on, who you think is going to win. Obviously, yeah. this is Johnny Depp's defamation trial. There's a countersuit by Amber Heard. What I want to focus on today, uh, and I don't know if you have any thoughts on whose career mm. might still be alive following this, because some are calling this kind of a career killer trial, but yeah. I don't know. I think, uh, well, I'll get you to chime in, but I think maybe Johnny Depp uh, still has, you know, a lot on the go following this. Oh, yeah, definitely. I, I was going to say, I think regardless of the outcome of this trial, We've seen, you know, through social media that Johnny Depp is really the one that, you know, people are rooting for. Um, you know, people feel like he's been wronged. Uh, he has obviously a very long history and legacy in Hollywood. So I think no matter what happens, there's going to be something out of that comes out of this for Johnny Depp. Now, whether it's going to be, you know, Disney or any of these big contracts, I, I don't know. I, I don't particularly think so. But he's definitely in less trouble, I think, uh, in the court of public opinion than Amber Heard is right now. She looks, it's not looking good for her, no matter if she wins or, or loses, um, just in terms of people wanting to go see her movies. So, yeah, the, the reality is that the internet has already spoken, regardless of what the jury says. Um, the jury will just kind of like vindicate, I guess, uh, Johnny or Amber for, for the, the record. So. You are so right. Just go on TikTok and you'll know exactly what Ricky's talking about. about the court of, cr crazy. The court crazy. of public opinion. It is crazy. So just to give an idea, Johnny Depp, has only he's only had two movies uh, since that uh, op-ed that, that Amber Heard actually put out. Uh, right. They were independent, Waiting for the Barbarians uh, and Minamata, both independent films, like I said. So I don't know yeah. if he's going to do like another Pirates of the Caribbean type film, although... I don't want to get people too excited. I don't want to get Johnny Depp fans too excited. But yeah. IMDb, and you can take this with a grain of salt, IMDb mm. has him listed in the cast of Beetlejuice 2. Oh, really? That is now, very... <laughs> Yeah. No, no, like I said, take that with a bit of a grain of salt because I think it's not like Wikipedia where anyone can go in and kind of change it, but there's a bit of a process. But I don't know. There's no official announcements, but I don't know. Maybe well, Johnny Depp in Beetlejuice? Is it Tim Burton? I forget. Is it Tim Burton? Well, Burton did the original. I don't know if he's back, but that would make sense because that Burton, would make sense. Yeah. Burton and Depp. Exactly. So I would say maybe Burton would throw him lifelines down the road as well, um, which obviously he has. He has a very close relationship and he's done a lot of great work with Burton. So I would not be surprised. But um, if, if he's if he's working on Beetlejuice, too. Amber Heard uh, in Aquaman. We know her, her role has been trimmed down, 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 down. Do we see her in a big franchise movie again? I don't think so. You know, I doubt it. I, I doubt it just because Aquaman was really the, um, the I guess, the blockbuster breakout role for her. Yeah. And with all of the controversy surrounding it, it's kind of just no studio is going to want to approach her for a big role and risk audiences boycotting it, essentially, which is what they're doing with Aquaman, too. Um, 
So I, I mean, I, it, it just doesn't look like she's going to be getting anything she really wants. She lost, I think she also lost like an Amazon movie. So like, it, it's kind of like, even if, again, even if the court rules in her favor, nobody yeah. is going to want to touch that because the, 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 the court of public opinion is so against her. But then again, Hollywood's a fickle place, Ricky. Hollywood's fickle. They like a, they like a good comeback story. So never say never, especially, I mean, the one that comes to mind right now is Mel Gibson, who is yes. very much back in the fold. And if I remember his original, uh, the, all the recordings, all the stuff that came out about his anti-Semitism, all that stuff, it was very bad. And I thought, oh, he's never going to work again. And here we see Mel Gibson a lot. Uh, Robert Downey Jr., you know, he had yes. a very troubled past. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Hollywood, like I said, pretty fickle, but they do like that good comeback story. Yeah. But um, we shall see. I do want to move on quickly to Star Wars because mm. there's a lot of news, like a yeah. lot. They yeah. do this thing called, uh, what is it? Star Wars Celebration Day. <laughs> the Star Wars Celebration. <laughs> it's a gathering of Star Wars fans from around the world, and they celebrate all aspects of the franchise it happened for four days at California's uh, Anaheim Convention Center. Uh, here are some of the big highlights, and I want you to chime in on maybe ones that you're most excited for or the mm. ones that you think will do the best. Uh, I'll start with Obi-Wan Kenobi. I mean, that's mm. out. A few episodes are out on Disney+. Plus. We'll start there. What do you think? Are you, have you Love been watching? I, yeah, I've watched it. I finished the second episode yesterday. I, I am sold, man. I absolutely love it it might be my favorite star wars so far oh really uh, yeah and it's only two episodes in i, I yeah, think wow. i just i just love obi-wan i love ewan mcgregor as him i love where they're taking it with these two episodes um it's it's really 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 cool to see this come back for full circle like after so many years so yeah, yeah i'm 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 very happy about what they're doing um, with Obi-Wan specifically and uh, yeah, some of the stuff that you'll, you'll be talking about shortly. Absolutely. Okay. Well, Mandalorian season three, we have to wait until I think it's February, 2023 is the official yes. date, but uh, that's probably the one that I still hold <laughs> dearly yes. as my favorite piece yes. of Star Wars, anything right now. So I'm very much excited for season three. Are you, I'm, I'm guessing you enjoyed the Mandalorian. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 The Mandalorian is great. It's so much fun. It's such a, it's such a fun story and, uh, even um, Book of Boba Fett, you know, with the, the crossover event, which also gives you a little peek into where Jin Djarin is going next in, in, in season three was also great. So love that interconnectedness. Hope they keep doing that with Obi-Wan and some of the other ones they announced. Uh, the, the Star Wars universe, I, you know, it's never something I was really into, but it, it, they are just shaping it up to be such such a Marvel kind of like yeah. universe. And it's so great so far. So, yeah, it's exploding. It's exploding yeah. with all the stuff. OK, Um uh, Rosario Dawson, you must mm. heard about this. Of 2023, course. she is starring as Shoka. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, she's like, like we already saw her in, in Mandalorian, and she looked amazing in the costume. She looked amazing in the role. Um, so I, I am here for the standalone series. I think anytime you have an interesting character like that, you want to flesh them out, and you want to, you want, you want to give them their own story. And I, she's, she's a bit, she was a big. A character in the Clone Wars and the animated series. Yeah, that's what, yeah. and a, a lot of people loved her there, so it's only fitting that she gets her own Jedi story uh, uh, live action. And Rosario Dawson is, I mean, she's she's fantastic. Um, she looks the part. She plays the part. I, I am over the moon and very, very excited for that series as well. Me too. And speaking of Clone Wars, they, we did get a new look and they're going to do more of this. But I feel like I didn't watch any of the previous ones, but there's so mm. many. It's a little yeah. intimidating to jump it is, in. But it is. It is. I haven't, but maybe I will. I'll see. Uh, oh, and uh, Andor. We can't forget about the uh, the prequel to the uh, film Rogue One, a Star Wars story. August 31st on Disney+. Plus. We actually got a nice little teaser trailer. Yeah. Uh, th that looks great. Um, Andor, is that one yeah. on your Yeah, I'll d I'm going to watch them all. I mean, I'm going to watch them <laughs> all. Uh, I, once you're in for, you know, two, you're in for like five. So... I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna watch it. I, I really enjoyed Rogue One. I thought uh, I thought it was a bit underrated, um, and I think I that's something that's been said. It. Yeah, it was a great it was great. So I'm very excited to see what they're gonna do with the prequel. Um, with that, it's it's gonna be cool. I I just love that they're just exploring these stories on a small screen and giving audiences uh, a more fleshed out version of the universe that you, you you wouldn't get in theaters. Yeah, no, and Rogue One, by the way, of mm -hmm. all like the live like the big movies, yeah, like the f feature full length movies, theatrical films. That's one of my favorites of the past. Maybe of the of all the new ones they've done. I yes. loved Rogue One so, yes. so much. All right, Ricky, we're going to end things with uh, some recommendations. I tasked you a little bit of homework. Uh, maybe it could be a game that you're going to recommend. Maybe it's a TV show you're watching or a movie. Uh, what should people be doing in their entertainment? Yeah. 
world. Yeah, yeah. So I'll just give a couple of Spitfire. I'll give a, a little mix of all three. So obviously Obi Wan uh, just came out. Highly, highly recommend you watch it. You know, you don't have to be a Star Wars aficionado to to appreciate it. They give you a nice little recap at the beginning. You can yeah. just dive into the story, and it's really, really well done. Great acting. Um, Stranger Things, obviously, everybody's watching it. I'm sure everybody who's watching this is watching it. Uh, I'm not. I haven't finished it yet. I have one episode left of Volume One, and it is. It, they're like mini movies, right? They're like an hour, fifteen minutes. It's crazy, and it's great. I'm really, so really enjoying it. It's very dark. It, it went so full on horror, but you know, I'm a, I'm a horror guy. I really like Me horror, too. so I'm I'm here for it. Um, definitely that. And I watched Maverick in IMAX and Top. oh yeah. my god wow what an experience right? yeah I, I highly re if you love planes even if you don't love planes to some of the shots in this movie some of the stuff they've done with the cinematography I mean it's it's incredible right it's pushing the limits like that's what Tom Cruise is about so I highly recommend you go see Maverick and then for, for some game recommendations really quickly um, you know Genshin Impact it's been it's been around for a little while but it's a free-to-play mobile game it just came out with a new update yesterday I, I highly recommend it. You can get it anywhere for free, literally on your phone, on your PlayStation, on your computer. Um, and then another one that I had fun with over the weekend is uh, Nintendo The Switch Sports, which is kind of a follow-up to Wii Sports. And that's just great with the family and and, and, and just with friends, you know, playing tennis or, or sparring or whatever it is. So, yeah, just a couple of, couple of fun things. Amazing. I know what I'm doing this weekend. And, oh, I'm going to throw out one because I did. You can watch it now. Um, yeah on Amazon, it is The Boys. Yes, yes. Now, I got a little bit of an advanced peek, so I, I did see, like, all the shows already. People oh, can, man. people, I'm sure people have already started their binging. Uh, but it's, man, it's great. I love that show. So there you go. Lots of great stuff. Hey, Ricky, this has been fun. Thank you so much for joining me. Always a pleasure. But, Ricky, uh, don't, don't go anywhere because, well, me and you, we still got to take that little trip. And that trip is beyond, beyond the list. The list. Be, be on the list. All right, Ricky, here's what we do. We uh, dig deep in the vast archives of Watch Mojo. I pluck out a little top 10 list. Uh, we get to go beyond that list. Uh, what that means is we just get to give our own opinions. Did Watch Mojo get it right, get it wrong? Uh, do we recognize any of the entries? I got a feeling you might today because we're doing the scariest superheroes of all time. You're a superhero guy. I'm a superhero guy. Do you like the do you like the darker heroes? Because I really do. I absolutely like them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I you know like you got the Boy Scouts like Superman and uh, and uh, those are fine and good, but you need the you need the ones who are willing to take off the gloves and uh, and get get bloody. Yeah, even as a kid, I kind of, I was always drawn to like the darker heroes. There's Spawn. one I don't want to. What's that? <laughs> Spawn. I love Spawn. Yeah, Spawn. he's my guy. That's the yeah. one I was going to mention. Yeah, I'm, he better be on this list. Watch Mojo. He better be on this list. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Let's get into it. So these are the darker, they're, they're anti-heroes, if you will. So they don't need to be straight up Boy Scouts, as Ricky mentioned, like Superman. Uh, but we're starting with number 10. I talk about Timely, uh, Moon Knight. Uh, here's a character that I didn't know too, too much about until Disney Plus threw out their little show. Uh, okay. And yeah, he's pretty darn dark <laughs> and brutal. It's like, uh, I, I like, I like that, like, you know, he's got that, like, that, that, he's, he, but he's he's funny too because yeah. he's, he's he's got that right they, they have that duality between uh steven and mark and uh he's just he's he's really great great design conchu is really cool too which is also kind of terrifying yeah. like they had like the kind of like that horror scene where you first meet him and all the, all the lights are going off so yeah he's definitely uh he's got more of a dark uh scary factor going on egyptian mummy type thing. yeah absolutely <clears throat> and with marvel I'm, I'm curious to see how many marvel characters will actually make the list because they're known for kind of their bright, like their Spider-Man and their yes, yeah, a little more can, fun. Yeah, which can get dark at times, but in, in general, they're 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 more fun and 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 not so much. So Moon Knight definitely for Marvel, uh, a great character and very complex. And yeah, the show is the show was so much fun to watch. Oscar Isaac That's is amazing, master, master, so good. Uh, ooh, number nine is great. Uh, uh, Rorschach from The Watchmen. Yes. Yeah, so, he is. He's. Ter I mean, there, I just always think of that one scene where he's in the he's in the cafeteria in the prison, and he's oh, thinking, yeah. he's, you know, what I'm talking about, and he's like, "You guys think I'm in here with you? You're locked in here with me." Yeah. And he's 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 such a charismatic character. Takes no shit. Uh, never compromises his values right up until the end. Um, we'll do it. You know, it's got it's got like a boy's kind of a theme running through yeah. it in the terms of just taking down yeah. these these jerk superheroes who are trying to control everything and that was kind of like the first introduction to that and then the boys came out obviously and i just fell in love with it but yes warshak um definitely a great uh, a great anti-hero hero 
whatever you want to call it. Yeah, I love when he goes beast mode in that jail. It's so great. But also, he's he's a smaller guy, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He's tiny. Like, he's he's skinny. He's got the you know, he looks kind of frazzled up a bit. Yeah. So that's what, and he just he just he goes goes crazy. But he's got that cool mask too that kind of moves around like the Rorschach. The test, Rorschach, test, yeah. Which is fun. So yeah, I I, I love that character. Uh, I I'm trying to remember. Oh yeah, so they did the Watchmen TV series. It's been a few years now. Yeah, uh, I, had, did see, you I never. I, I didn't catch that. I didn't catch okay. that because I read that they were going to cancel it, and then I kind of was like, mm. I heard I heard it got great reviews when it came out, Damn. but I, I I didn't uh, I didn't follow it, and it kind of just went away somehow. It it won it won awards. It won awards, and I was going to say my question was, and I answered it in my own head as I remembered, yeah. is Warshak in that show? And yeah, yeah, he was. Well, yeah, no spoilers, but no spoilers. versions. Uh, okay, let's move on to Dream. Ooh, this is interesting. This is with the Sandman, uh, the graphic novel from Neil Gaiman. Uh, and they're actually doing a show at a net, on Netflix, which I'm very yes. excited to see. I've yeah. dabbled a little bit in the Sandman. I know people that really like it. It is very dark. It's very uh, complex is, an, is another word I'll use for this one too. But the, the character Dream, for those that know, know that he is pretty uh, pretty badass. Yeah, I'm curious to see because I, I had seen that kind of like the title pop up when I was searching Netflix like a very long time ago, and it I never I don't know when it's coming out, but I I don't know much about it. Um, I don't know much about the character. I think it's one of those those characters that again you you won't you don't really get in the pop culture. Um, yeah. It's more you know, but uh, I'm I'm here for it, man. Any exposure to these new characters, the way Moon Knight was, you know, kind of a new character for me. Yeah, I'm excited to see how they do the Sandman. Uh, uh on screen because like with Watchmen, people were saying before Watchmen, they, it's not filmable. You can't right. do it. Yes. The story is so com too. Yeah. It's so complex. There's so many elements. And I feel that too with Sandman, the stuff that I have read, I'm like, how are they going to translate this to screen? Yeah. There's these things of like, like these kind of like themes of like time dead, like all these kind of like ethereal kind of like metaphysical, uh, yeah. uh, uh storylines. But it's, uh, I mean, who knows? Maybe they'll, they'll do some breakthrough in uh, television. Yeah, and the, the technology's there now, too, so it doesn't look too... Because I'm assuming it'll be heavy uh, CGI, at, CGI at points. Yeah. yeah. That, that's always make or break, right? When you get the CGI and you're like, hmm. It has to, it has to, be, it has to have a reason to be there, CGI. That's, there that's the point of it. Love it. Uh, number seven on this list is a character that I liked in the first couple movies that he did. It's Hellboy. Now, mm. they did one in 2019... With David uh, Harbour from Stranger yes, Things that yes. didn't quite hit the mark. But I do like the character Hellboy. I don't know. Are you are you a fan? I didn't read too much of his comics. I really only know him from the movies itself. But uh, Same. Yeah, I watched Hellboy a long time ago. Um, you know, it. I think obviously Ron Perlman is just, you know, stand out. Um, he's yeah. like a oh, he's yeah. great. And then so is David Harbour. He was... You know, in terms of the physicality of the role, I thought he was great, but not a character that I really seek out to go watch. Um, yeah. You know, it's just kind of like one of those for me. Yeah. Guillermo del Toro did the first two, um, and he always wanted to do a third with yeah. Perlman. Never got yeah. around to it, and then they tried to reboot it, and it just... Yeah. So maybe we will get the third one? You never say never in Hollywood. Uh, the Crow locks in at our midway point, well, at number six, rather, and... They're doing a new... Well, are they doing the new Crow? Because they, they said they were going to do it before with Jason Momoa. That right. got canceled. Now yeah. they say they're going to do it with the guy from... Uh, the guy that played Pennywise. Yeah. Skarsgård. Well, Skarsgård, right. Yeah. So that's That'd what that's the latest on the Crow reboot. But the original, oh. original Crow movie... <sighs> uh, man, that is... That's some so. great cinema. And, and then, of course, Martin Tragedy. You can't yeah. think of that movie without thinking of the tragic... A that's real part life story. Of, that's part of its like appeal. It's like it, yeah. it really was like a sad, sad film because he died and he's so much untapped potential over there. So, oh my god, so much, it's so much. Crazy. Brandon Lee was amazing. But yeah. the character itself, and I did read a few comics. Um, I just love the look of the character too, right? And you know what's great is <laughs> I'm a wrestling fan too, Ricky. Yeah, there, yeah, there's a there character you go. called Sting. Do you know Sting? Yes, yes, of course. Yeah, with the, the black guy. <laughs> I mean, it's a complete ripoff of the crow, right. um, but it just looks badass. Yeah, uh, you know, with the with the white face paint and the, the big long black trench coats. No, that's a cool movie. I want to rewatch that that one. That's, I'd, I'd that, give it another watch. I'd give it another watch for sure. Number five. Oh, here we go with another Marvel. Uh, this one's Punisher, of course. <laughs> Dark, darker uh, heroes. We can't leave Punisher off the list at number five here. Just. Uh, you know, How was that not... series? Did, did you watch the series with Joe uh, Bernthal, I think? Oh, it... yeah. 
Yeah, because that yeah. one came out. That that one got like I heard people really liked it. I heard some people were like, okay. The the series itself is okay. He he mm. was great as as yeah. the character. He's maybe my favorite because there's been a few that have taken on the Punisher. Yes. Uh, character, right? We who was the one in the the original movie? Oh god, if I remember, oh, I saw oh, that in theaters when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah, Dolph Lundgren did one, and then there was like way back, and then there was yeah. another one, and yeah, I don't know if they've really gotten it too too right on screen, but Bernthal was a great actor. But in the comics, I mean, the Punisher will—he's not gun shy; he will no. take you down. And a, and a tragic uh, story, right? His wife, his kids, yeah, classic mafia hit. Uh... Revenge story. It's always good. You know, revenge stories are always great. If you do them right, they can be really fun. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. An another another one that like, you know, maybe they'll get rebooted. Maybe we'll see him in the MCU with Spider-Man at some point. You know? I love it. Yeah. I'm, I'm there for that. They need to. They need to. And, and, but keep John Bernthal like they did with yes. uh, Dare yeah. like they did with Daredevil. They kept the same actor, which I loved because he's great. Uh, you know what I have? Comic, speaking of the comics, I have a, the weirdest crossover. It's the Punisher meets right. Archie. From Archie what? Comics, <laughs> and it is hilarious. Does he kill Archie? <laughs> well, he he tries to because there's a. Oh shit! He's he's I forget what the story is, but there's a someone that looks like Archie. Okay. Has killed people and and no. Punisher is out to kill him, but then he thinks Archie's. I need the, to see that River River Riverdale crossover on Netflix with Punisher. <laughs> yes, do it, do it on the big screen. Yeah. All right, moving on to number four. This is interesting. The Swamp Thing. Yes, for those that know the comics, know yes, he's a Derek character, and there's a lot going on. I actually know a guy that like loves the Swamp Thing comics. I'm familiar with the old '80s yes. <laughs> Swamp Thing movies, which are the cheesiest. The cheesiest, of the cheese. yeah. Especially uh, the second one. Doesn't intimidate me, but uh, you know, if uh, again, it's, it's one of those things where you see it done in a new age, it might breathe some new life into it. Yeah. The only reason why I like the second movie is because it stars Heather Locklear, who <laughs> it's the only my, redeeming quality. My dream girl. Uh, yeah, Swamp Thing's great though, and 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 what a legacy going back to. I think Neil Gaiman wrote his his books back in the day, and man, since 1971 he debuted. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, a character is great when it debuts all the way back when, and still 50 years. Yeah, yeah. And still, people are still talking about it. All right, here we go. Number three is my guy, Spawn. Here we go, Ooh. Spawn. Come on, if you're a 90s kid um, or early 2000s, you had to know Spawn. Love Spawn, dude. I had the games. I have the comics. I have the first 10 comics in mint condition. Um, wow. I know you, sp you spoke to Todd McFarlane as I well. Did. So that's also twice. very, very twice. There you go. Yeah. So he's and we need. I need a movie. I need a television show. I, I need that cape. I need, need it need now. It. now. Because you know what? Okay. The the first movie, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not so great. It, but there was an HBO. The cartoons. An animated series. Yeah. Cartoon yes. Series. That's 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 the one that I grew up watching, and I would rent them. Amazing. Amazing. They're like. Ricky, they were so ahead of their time, and it was yeah. so so amazing, so amazing. So, yeah, they need to do more. The comics are great now because what Todd has done, and we talked about that in our interview, is he's expanded the the, the Spawn universe. Yes. Uh, so we have – there's lots of different you Spawn titles. you got the titles. angels. There's, there's so many different ways oh, yeah. that he goes. It's, it's, it's beautiful, beautiful. I really need to – we need to see something, Todd. Please, please get in production. Yeah. Yeah, because there was, and every time I talk to him, it's always like, yes, because he's in, it's with uh, Blumhouse, who yes. does like the horror movies, which is great. Which is great, It's a good yeah. fit. But yeah, they're always like, all right, we'll make an announcement soon, but <laughs> never never soon enough. Never soon enough. Yeah, no, I love Spawn. Can't get enough. All right, uh, number two on this list is Batman. Yeah. He's pretty yeah, he's dark. Sc you know, he's scary, man. Uh, he's, uh, he's waiting in the shadows to beat the shit out of you. Um, and, and you know, his most recent movie is just a film noir, essentially. It's very, and it's very like dark. the, oh, it's so dark. And I, yeah. listen, we had Rebecca on last week and she said she kind of liked more. <laughs> she didn't like the dark Batman. She liked kind of the yeah. Joel Schumacher Batman. And I was uh -oh. like, what? Nah, no. nah, not for me. Not for right. Me. Batman, yeah. the darker, the better. The ben, Batman, Batman is like, uh, I mean, even if you watch Titans, I mean, he is just a mess, right? He's, uh, mm -hmm. he's, 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 he, he takes kids and he makes them his like... He makes them his little assassins. Like he's he's been yeah. broken so many ways. So yeah, he is not a happy guy. No, for sure, for sure. 
Speaking of Titans, are you? Did have you uh, been watching that show? The I Titans finished, show. I, I finished. I it. like it. I really enjoyed. It. I think they're doing such a great job. I mean, it looks so good too. The yeah. effects, the cast. But um, I watched the I watched the original cartoons, Teen Titans, and I loved those oh, as yeah. well. So for me to just see this come to live action, it's like, just give me more. Give me more, please, HBO. This is this is what I want to see from DC. These kinds yeah. of stories from DC. Yeah, yeah you know? no, for sure. I think that's a little underrated show too. Um, uh, Titans. All right, and number one on this list, I don't know, this is a little controversial for me because I don't know, maybe I would have put Spawn or even Batman number one, but Watch Mojo's got Ghost Rider. Ghost, Ghost Rider. Rider, clocking it at number one. I mean, yeah, he's got a flaming skull head. Um, <laughs> it's just because it's Nick Cage, so it's just so like, oh, man. Yeah, I you mean, think, you think the movies, you think Nick Cage. You think Nick Cage. But as yeah. a character, yeah, he makes a deal with the devil. There's There's all kinds of dark backstories there, so... We need something. We need. Uh, I think they're they're talking about it, or there is like a reboot or something in mind um, with a character. But uh, I don't know who's. I don't know who they would get the plane to take him seriously. Because like I said, the Nick Cage. Nick Cage is obviously amazing, but like I just can't see him like as Superman. You know, like I can't see him as a, as a superhero. He's just he's Nick Cage. He's his own superhero. I don't know. I, I don't know. The rumor for like the longest time is that mm. Norman Reedus from The Walking oh. Dead. Oh, man. And I'm that for is, it. I'm all for that's it. That's a good cast. That is actually a very good casting. Yeah, that's been the rumor. Nothing's official, and I don't know if that's fan casting, but that's pretty good fan casting. That is Because um, you just associated him with being a badass on a motorcycle. So, uh, right. so we shall see. All right, Ricky, it's now time for our Mojo Chats of the Week. We're kicking things off with some of the actors of the new political thriller slash comedy. Oh, yeah, it's called 18 and a Half. <laughs> The movie is titled uh, 18 and a Half, and uh, we're dealing with a, a White House transcriber who gets thrust into the Watergate scandal uh, to tell me all about it. Uh, I've got one of the stars here. Uh, hey, Willa, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Uh, better now that I'm talking with you. Listen, I I, <laughs> I just watched this movie last night, and, I, and it, it's uh, it's really interesting. I really enjoyed it, and I'm hoping maybe you can, you can help me uh, describe it to people because... Who's the director here? Uh, Dan Burvis. He's got a real uh, sensibility to him. His, his movies are, um, I don't want to say off kilter, but they're different than maybe what you could expect. Uh, <laughs> let people know what they can expect out of 18 and a half. Yeah, I mean, it's um, it's a very contained movie about a very large moment in history that kind of takes that moment and distills it into the interpersonal relationships of these you know characters that we meet in the movie and um really in the dynamic between paul morrow and connie lashley um who are both trying to understand whether they are on the same side or on the same team in kind of trying to unravel this uh this question of what the 18 and a half minute gap on the watergate tapes may be so this um, is, and, and we should mention that this is a fictionalized, uh, yes, yes. <laughs> this isn't what yes. actually happened. We didn't actually find the gap. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there you go. Uh, yeah. There's a movie for you. Uh, but I mean, it's very funny too. Like I, like, it, listen, there's, there, we're kind of blending genres. Like I said, Dan Murphy. Oh, definitely. That's yeah. a great job at, of that. But like, I wasn't wrong to like laugh out loud at a lot of the stuff, right? No. Yeah. It's, it's, there's certainly, it's wild. <laughs> It is very wild. Uh, what's the what's the time frame? Uh, uh, 1975, 74? Uh, in 74? 74. Now yeah. you uh, clearly weren't born. Uh, no. What do you do to prepare for this? I mean, obviously you heard about the Watergate scandal, but are you like looking into stuff or how do, how do you as an actor? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Dan Moya and Dan Mervish um, both did a huge amount of research uh, for the film. And I kind of got to get some of that sent to me, which was made my research job easier. Um, but I also think that there is, you know, there's obviously we've all we've all read about Watergate. This is obviously a fictionalized um, account of something that could have happened during that whole scandal. And I think that, you know, I think there's a reason that we're seeing so much. Um, Watergate stuff happening right now because I think it really spoke to a moment that we kind of are in were in politically um, and I think that there was a really kind of a renewed interest in 
that sort of dynamic of like mistrust in the highest office and not understanding, um, you know, who to trust. And I think also for Connie in particular, I think that we have this whole, um, the whole kind of, you know, very much uh, an undercurrent plot of her own politics changing um, because she is someone who has worked in the White House who had a great degree of patriotism um, for her job and for what she was doing. And, um, and that is kind of slowly being unraveled and in her own experience of, of truth and, and what's happening at her place of work. Um, Did you? And so I think, yeah. No, no, go ahead. Go finish what your, your thought was ahead. That was a very long winded answer to your question. But like, yes, I think I did. I did some research, but then I think I also was like kind of more interested in understanding why we were wanting to tell this story about this particular time and what I as an actor could bring to my interpretation of the character that I was playing from that time that kind of would speak to you know, a modern audience, because, it, you know, it isn't, it isn't, this movie isn't a piece of historical um, nonfiction. And when you're kind of dealing with that, I think it's a question of like, why, why is this what we're saying? And, and what are we trying to actually say by saying it? But it is a, it is a period piece. And that uh, brings me to my next question, because you got like, you know, the, the rotary phones, you've got uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, the clothing garbs. And I talk to people that do period pieces. Um, and sometimes the actors really like getting in like the old retro fashion. Some of them hate yeah. it. Uh, what was your experience? Would you would you like to revisit 70s fashion? I'm assuming there was a lot of hairspray. In yeah, I, I I may or may not be in the 70s again right now. And on this thing I'm shooting in Canada, oh, um, the 70s are back, <laughs> let me tell you. Um, but no, I think I mean, you know, I, Sarah, our costume designer for 18 and a half, um, it was so great like I had I had like full like 1970s like underwear like it was all she like went she went all the way like we were it was she was very committed to um to making everything very accurate which was just really fun and I do think it is as an actor when you're playing someone who's from a different time period it's really helpful in kind of just like situating the way that your body would move, you know, like the clothes were inherently less comfortable than the clothes that we wear today. It makes you sit in a different way. It makes you move in a different way. And all of that stuff is just like, you know, helpful extra, you know, information. Awesome. Yeah, no, I would love to, I always think I would love to go back to the sixties and do like the Mad Men Don <laughs> Draper look, but then I'm like, they didn't have like cool fades back then. I don't <laughs> Exactly. Do and then I'd have to take up smoking and be a whole thing. Uh, let's talk. <laughs> let's talk about this cast uh, quickly because um, they're really great. Uh, alongside you, and I, I don't want to mess up his last name, but John, who uh, I'm a big fan of him from from First Cow. Uh, I know. I love him. He's great. It's so wonderful here. And then you've got uh, Richard Kind. I know. It's so fun. Inherently funny, right? Just yeah. Oh, anything yeah. that comes out of that guy's mouth. Uh, but then you had some voice, and I didn't realize this till afterwards, but we had some pretty famous voices that, that we were hearing yeah. throughout the film. Yeah, I know. I know. It's, I mean, you know, I think that it's a testament to, to Dan Mervish and Dan Moya, because, you know, we all were working on a very low budget indie. And when you do that, it's a labor of love, you know, like you're not doing it because you're going to make money. <laughs> and that's actually a really fun environment to work in because everybody who's there just wants to be there to do the job they don't you know there's no yeah. sort of other agenda going on so if you're listening and you're like wait a minute is that john crier is that bruce campbell the answer is yes <laughs> yeah absolutely it is. <laughs> is uh hey listen it's uh it's a great film we do want to encourage people to go out there and check it out it's uh, uh 18 and a half uh, and as you heard from willa lots to discover and lots to unfold and uh, don't be afraid to laugh hey willa this has been so much fun thank you so so much <laughs> thank you have a good day The movie is titled uh, 18 and a Half. It's a, a bit of a political thriller with plenty of kooky comedy thrown in. Uh, here to tell me all about it. Uh, well, I got one of the stars. Hey, John, how's it going? Hey, it's all right. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing fantastic. Listen, I saw this movie. I really, uh, I really enjoyed it. It's something different. Uh, people always ask me, is there something different out there? Because they're always seeing the same things. 
This is it. Uh, Dan Mervish, right? Uh, the director. Give us a bit of a breakdown about your particular character um, and and what we can expect, I guess, out of this one. Yeah, so uh, I played Paul. Uh, he is not quite who he seems to be, as are most of the people in this film. But he, we meet him and uh, as a New York Times journalist who is seeking out the 18 and a half minute tape that is mi missing from uh, the Watergate tapes that were, that were recorded by Nixon in his office at the, you know, the Oval Office at the White House. And uh, he's trying to get that from Connie, who's Willa Fitzgerald's character. And uh, a lot of craziness ensues because of that. <laughs> craziness indeed. Uh, and I was telling, when I, I talked to Willa and I was like, it's okay to laugh at this, right? There are definitely comedy moments. <laughs> oh, definitely, in. definitely. You know, I mean, this it's also kind of a throwback in a, some ways uh homage to uh those movies from the 70s in particular uh all the president's men and three days of the condor and uh conversation french connection things like that and that's kind of what my research was watching those old films and looking at those leads you know redford uh dustin hoffman and how they kind of approach the material but what we do, what I think makes this fresh and new is that we, we make it silly. You know, it becomes a, a, the, what, what starts off as a serious affair kind of becomes ridiculous and zany um, by the end. Yeah. And we don't, and, and we don't know what, uh, they haven't discovered what that 18 and a half minutes, what's on there, right? Like that's still. Trying, no, no one no, knows. Still... That, that's what, one of the reasons when I got the script that I thought it was so fascinating that Daniel uh, Moya kind of through his own imagination filled in the gap and uh, to approach it in the way that we do in the film where it's played out for you 18 and a half minutes you know in kind of a one shot in a single uh, I thought that was really fascinating um, but I'm sure whatever's on it or was on it was pretty bad we might we might never know uh, I, don't although think I don't think we will ever know i don't know uh, yeah. conspiracies are 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 out there for it um talk to me about this the time period we're, we're playing in 1974 i believe 1974 mm -hmm. um so i asked this to willa as well because you got a dress because you were born way after this uh time period did you like living in in the 70s or is this something that uh, you would <laughs> rather not yeah i wish i would add platform shoes though you know big high made me tall finally um no it's i i always i'm a history nerd so i i'm attracted to projects that have a historic kind of spin to them or, or let you live in in the past in a way so yeah it's always fun it's always fun to be able to step into an era that we missed and you'll never get to experience this is our chance to do it. I mean, if I wasn't an actor, it might be like a Civil War reenactor or something like that. I might be doing that on the, or like uh, uh, LARPing around with the sword. And <laughs> something. I just, there's something fun about that. I would love to see you LARP. Uh, I, I would too. That would be so fun. Uh, okay, we touched on, on on Willa being in the cast, but this really is a, a fantastic cast. <laughs> I loved um, Richard Kind, who, who always makes me laugh. And also too, you're going to hear, you don't see them, but you'll hear uh, specific voices, some big, some big names. Uh, talk to me about the dynamic of the casting and, and your impression working with these guys. I mean, Richard is obviously a comedic legend. He's been doing it for a long, long time. And he is one of those people who can step into a role where maybe one scene, a few lines, and he can just make it hilarious and three-dimensional and brilliant. And, uh, you know, even in this, on the page, Jack... Could have gone a million different ways. Could have been a million different actors. Um, it, you know, it wasn't a ton to go off of. And he steps in and he makes it memorable and unique and hilarious. Um, same with Vondi Curtis. Uh, you know, he's absolutely brilliant too. Um, and then you said the people on the tapes, Bruce and John Cryer, you know, mm. they've been around forever. Unfortunately, we still haven't met them. Uh, I don't know if we will ever, Will and I, I don't know if we will get to meet them, but having them on that tape is, is really exciting. It is, it is. So if you're listening and you're like, hey, that sounds like Bruce Campbell, it is, don't yeah. worry. Um, right. Okay, and I've been asking this lately too, uh, watching movies, because now at movie theaters, 
because this will be people probably want to watch this on on a big screen somewhere they're calling it an indie darling so definitely do watch it but now in these theaters john you you can get uh adult beverages you don't need to you can't it doesn't need to be root beer and coke and popcorn yeah. watching i don't even sneak my flask in anymore <laughs> there you go so, yeah so the big question now that i'm asking is what would you pair with 18 and a half for those that want to get themselves Ooh. a nice adult beverage. What would you pair? Maybe, a, maybe like a Tom Collins. That's yeah. very like, tra you know, because this is supposed to be in Maryland, like outside of Baltimore on the, on the Cape over there. So, uh, you know, it's very, you know, you're dealing with politics and the New York times and people who work at the white house and Republicans and, old money so yeah probably a tom collins that would be a nice pairing with this start the drinks i'm i'm in uh that sounds good maybe i'll have one right now <laughs> john thank thank you so much uh once again the movie is titled 18 and a half uh make sure you check it out all right and now here's my interview with danielle Laraquente from bosch legacy My guest today is a uh, wonderful actress who's got some uh, pretty noteworthy projects on the go. We're going to find out all about it. Hello, Danielle. How's it going? Hi, guys. Uh, listen, I'm, I'm excited to chat with you because, as I mentioned, you do have some really uh, great projects happening. The first I want to touch on is something called Bosch Legacy. Now, the reason why... Uh, I'm excited about it. I know a lot of people are as well because the original Bosch series went on for like, what was it, seven? Had seven seasons? That's mm -hmm. pretty amazing in the world of television. So this was mm -hmm. done through Amazon. Now we get a, a sequel. Am I mm -hmm. right about this? It's not a prequel. It's 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 not a spinoff. It's kind of a sequel. It's got similar characters. Will you tell me all about it? Yeah, um, it continues the story, but um, I think um, Bosch and the creators really wanted um, a, a new show to stand on its own in a sense. So even if you didn't catch up with the last seasons, you know, you'll still be able to jump right in, but it's so good that it's going to make you want to go back and watch and figure out what's going on. So it's really good stuff. No, that is good to know that for those that are going, I didn't watch Bosch. Can I still enjoy it? They definitely will. So what, what, what are we working with here? Is it once again uh, set in the world, the kind of a police procedural? Is that what's happening here? Yep. Yep. So now, um, you know, Harry is not a police officer anymore. He becomes a private investigator and his daughter, Maddie, becomes a rookie cop or what they would say boot on the show. So uh, they call him a what? A boot? A boot. That's like some slang term for, you know, LAPD. If you know, you know. <laughs> start, start at the bottom, you're just a boot, and then you... Yeah, that's... you fresh out the academy, so... <laughs> there you go. Now, do you play a boot as well, didn't you? I play a boot. I'm one of Matt, Maddie's pals, you know, we're in it together, and we're starting out, and uh, we have definitely the attitude of really trying to make a difference, and it, it's, it's hard work. You know, it's hard to be a professional... Um, I would say in a sense, also being a Latina, it's such an honor to be able to play a professional role mm. in on such a big show like Bosch. It's phenomenal. No, that is good stuff. Now, a little bit of a personal connection to you, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. Your parents, they were both, was it NYPD officers, retired officers? Yes, correct. Uh, wow. Both my parents retired NYPD. They met on the job. So it was so beautiful. Um, I remember sending them a picture of myself in uniform at my fitting. And I sent them a, a, a group uh, picture and my dad starts crying. You look just like your mother when I first met her and da -da -da -da, my mom. And it was just such a good staple in my career, my lifetime, just to be able to do that. So I love that. I love that story. Now, your parents were both police officers. You didn't want to follow in their footsteps? You, you know, what's, 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 what's really awesome is that my mom and my dad, they are so supportive with me and all their kids. I, they, they're like, you want to go juggle <laughs> some balls? You, you know, you go be a, a clown and you go juggle, like, whatever it is we want to do. We want to sew. We want to do anything. And I've always, since I can remember, um, since getting my first gig at four, I've always been, where's the stage? Where's the camera? How can I tell a story? Uh, making stories in my house and putting on plays. And they just knew. You and me both, Danielle, you and me both. <laughs> and I just keep moving, trucking along. And I know that this type of, you know, this kind of line of work is a journey and you just keep going. As my dad would always say, he's like, you know, being in, having an acting career is like at the DMV. 
You get a ticket and you wait in line. There you but go. if you get out that line, that's it. And I think a lot of people like are just waiting for that to happen. I'm like, don't get out of line. There's some, hey, that's good advice. Mm -hmm. Okay, something I read, I don't know if it's true. You can tell me if I'm completely wrong on this. You, when you were younger, were on Saturday Night Live in a thing with Jimmy Fallon. Is that true? Jimmy I Fallon? was. What? Okay, I need to know the details on this. I know, I know. It's so crazy. So um, he was playing Falcon Man. I don't know if you guys remember that. It was a little <laughs> skit where he, it was so yes. quick. I, you do. I do remember this. I'm an <laughs> SNL. He's hanging yeah. from a mountain. And this Falcon apparently brings him stuff and he's always asking the Falcon for help. So of course he uh, invites me to come help Jimmy Fallon. And um, he, I guess the Falcon told me that he, Jimmy was a pinata. So I have like a stick in my hand and I start beating him and, I'm, and, and it's hilarious. And um, yeah, I can't wait. God willing, one day I can be on that set and be like, Jimmy, I know you. Okay, Show the clip. Way back. How old, how old were you on this? Um, I think I was like 11. There you go. It's not a bad gig if you can get it. That's awesome. Right, right. Um, and I was also reading a little bit about uh, some of the things that you do outside of the acting world. Uh, you, you're not afraid to get to mix it up physical, right? Boxing, kickboxing yeah. are some of the things yeah. that you do. Yeah, well, you know, I grew up in martial arts, actually. So um, I am a black belt in Taekwondo. Uh, I also do a lot of combat training, which helps my acting and boxing and kickboxing. I really like to stay. That's kind of like my Zen, you know, and be able to, and especially being a woman, you know, in Los Angeles, you got to learn how to defend yourself. There you go. Word mm -hmm. to the wise. Don't don't mess with Danielle. Don't, don't mess with, mess with me, guys. And I've received word, uh, before I let you, I received word that the best Mandy Moore song is Crush. Just that is the, supposed to be the best? Is that one of the number ones? It's, my, it's just my favorite. Okay. <laughs> oh my okay, got it. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Uh, Danielle, this has been so much fun. Uh, I can't wait to follow your journey and check you out on all the projects that we uh, chatted about today. Um, you're just a, a pleasure to chat with. Thank you so much. Thank you. Make sure you guys check out Bosch Legacy airing May 5th on Freebie. Used to be IMDB TV, not anymore. Freebie. And also, this is us, May 2nd starting. You'll see your girl. Get the tissues ready. Thanks, yes. Danielle, for Thank helping me. Thank you so much. Pop the culture. All right. Well, that's going to do it for this edition, everybody. Uh, big thanks going out to Ricky, as always, bringing that fun. Uh, big thanks to Willa and John, 18 and a half. It's such a great film. And of course, Danielle, how much fun was she? And thank you for watching and listening. I've been Matt from Watch Mojo, popping that culture. <laughs>